For those who find themselves between a rock and a hard place, I guarantee you, God has a word in this text for you today. Now, if you have it all together, you can go ahead and go home. But if you have not yet had it all together, I'm here to tell you that God has a word today. So come walk with me down the corridor of this text. And I can assure you that I, I, I won't be too long. But as the chapter opens up, as we look at this chapter, uh, as we look at this chapter in 2 Kings, it speaks of King Jehoram. He now sits on the throne of Israel. He is, if you recall, the son of Ahab and Jezebel. Israel and Judah, although they are both Hebrews, they're two separate nations. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah at this time, and the king of Israel is Jehoram, who happens to be the son of the most wicked king in Israelite history, that of Ahab. Now Ahab is dead and he's gone, and although Jehoram has tried to make some feeble attempts at religious reform, the writer of Kings tries to say something good about Jehoram in the text, but he fails in the process, and, and, and he fails in it, but, but, but and so, and so now there's trouble on the horizon. I want you to see this. There's trouble in the Bible. I want you to see the trouble on the horizon. Moab begins to rebel against Israel and refuses to pay the king the tribute of money or the tax that is expected or required. And in light of this impending conflict, Jehoram seeks the help of King Jehoshaphat, who happens to be a godly king, the king of Judah. There is no king in Edom, but Edom was also a subject of Israel. Because they were under Israel, they were compelled to join the battle. So there you have it. You have Judah and Edom joined together to do battle with rebellious Moab, uh, and they bring along, or they ask God's people, Israel, to join them. Now, Cornerstone Community Church, I want you to understand those listening and watching and those here today, this is by no means a happy coalition. This is by no means Israel, Judah, and, and Edom are actually enemies. They are simply joined together for the survival of each one. All right? They are enemies who need each other so that they might survive. Right? We sing this song, y'all. I know we sing it. Uh, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. Yeah. What's it called? Oh, yeah, survive. All right, thank you. So that's what they were doing. They were surviving off of, off of each other. Stay with me, Cornerstone. In order to put themselves militarily in the advantages or advantageous position, the three allies decided, watch what they decided to do. They go around the southern end, and they took the long way around the Dead Sea. Stay with me. It's a far more dangerous and difficult path than it would have been to just go to the mountains of Edom at the south. But the Bible says that they fetched a compass. It really means, if you read the chapter, that they traveled in a circular fashion. Church, it was a long way to get to where they could attack Moab from the east. It was a long way. And as a consequence to their long journey, they discovered that during the journey, there was not enough water for their armies for the journey, for the cattle that followed them, or to feed their troops. It was then that somebody raised the God issue. Yes. Somebody raised the God issue. Somebody said to Jehoram, it looks like that, 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 you know, somebody said to Jehoram, we need to talk to God. And it looked like God had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hands of the enemies. That was the moment that Jehoshaphat raised the prophet question. And it's right there. It, 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 it's right there. He says, is there not a prophet of the Lord anywhere that we may inquire of the Lord? Is there a not, is there not a godly pastor that we can inquire of the Lord? Let me pause right there and say, sometimes it's important to get in touch with the pastor or prophet in your life. Be careful who you call because everybody may not have the right connection. I said, Cornerstone, be careful when you call because everybody who has a 10 pound Bible is not able to help you and bless you with your need. I said, be careful who you call because everybody, when they send you on and shout, ain't necessarily able to get a prayer through. I said, be careful who you call. It may be at the deepest part of the difficulty that you need to get in touch with somebody that can get in touch with somebody named Jesus. So be careful who you call. Yeah. Let me assure you that God has a word for you right now. In this ancient text about an ancient battle, 
involving people that you do not know and will never meet, down in the essence of this text, God has a word for you right now. Walk with me a little further. I did tell you that the allies of the text were not really allies, but they had joined themselves together for the purpose of survival. They were, they were really not friends. In fact, they were enemies. And what we learn here is that God is able to take your enemies and make them your allies. That's what we learn right in the text. God is able to take your haters and actually make them elevators. I'm talking to somebody. I know I am. I wish I was a better preacher. It would make sense. You would be able to see that God is trying to take some enemies that God will take some enemies and have them go out of their way to be nice to you on God's behalf. Who am I preaching to? Who knows what I'm not talking about today, right? You know, you know, God will, God will orchestrate a conflict in your life simply to cause the one who has, who has caused you the most bitter and heartache and God will, God will orchestrate that so that your arch enemy will have to become your footstool. Right here. 
This is the word God wants you to hear. God will use your enemies on your behalf. Come on. God will Come on. save you in a roundabout way to get you where he wants you to be. But in the process of dealing with your difficulties, you have to make preparations for your blessing. In order to experience the blessing, even in the midst of your difficulties, you've got to make preparations for your blessing. I, I, I wish I could make it plain of that. I wish it could be any plain of it. You have to prepare for your blessings, right? You have to make preparations for the gifts that God wants to give you. I said this morning at 8.30, stop asking God to bless you when you still have ungodliness in your life that you refuse to move out up something that's already full. And there are some things you've been asking God to remove, but God said, I gave you the power to remove that. I gave you the authority to do it. Don't sit there and say, Lord, bless me here, and Lord, bless me there. And you are knowingly keeping ungodliness. You know you lie. Stop lying. You know you got a bad attitude. Get rid of your bad You know you sleeping around. Stop sleeping around. Right? You, you, you know you're doing that destructive behavior. God said, listen, you're doing that because you want to. Now you're saved. You're not doing that because you have to. And I'm not going to bless you with the best things. And look, listen, I said this morning, you tell your kids, I ain't doing such and such till you clean your room. And that's good for you to tell your kids, what makes you think God does they tell the same thing? I will do it after you clean up what you're supposed to clean up. You ain't talking to your wife for two days and you think you get the prayer through? Honestly, you walk right by each other. You ain't you have not settled the issue, but you think your prayer is going through? I take the Lord so you have to make preparations. I, I, I lost my place here, but there it is in this text. In this ancient text, there's some people that you've never met. The God is trying to talk to you, right? So, so, so you have to prepare for your blessings. There's a word that you need to hear. God, God, God will use your enemies on behalf, but sometimes you gotta take the wrong way around. You have to make preparation for God's gifts. Look at the text, right? The text, the text says that. One of the kings, Jehoshaphat, inquired of the prophet, right? And the prophet gave him a strange word. But here's the deal we got about the prophet. I love Elijah. If you read the words right before Elisha, Elisha, not Elijah, Elisha. Elisha says this. this is, you can't miss this point. And I didn't put it in my notes, but you got you to get this. Elisha's chilling. The godly king says, we got to go get the pastor. The first thing that Elisha says before Jehoshaphat sent for him, Jehoram sent for him, and Jehoram said, bro, and Je Elisha said to Jehoram, God ain't got no word for you. God ain't got no word for you. Then we found out Jehoshaphat called for it. Elisha says this. He said, here's the word of the Lord. Word of the Lord says, I wouldn't even be talking to you if it wasn't for the presence of Jehoshaphat. Right? Listen, I'm not, if it wasn't for the presence of of the Christian, of the believer, I wouldn't even be talking to you. So I'm trying to say to some of y'all who are on the fence, you better have a godly man and godly woman in your life. Get my sister, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me help some of y'all out who play on your iPhones. Let me watch this out. Some of you are only here today because God has blessed the people you've been associated with.
I don't see no cover. I'm we coming out of a global pandemic. And God is telling me to do something. God is telling me that, 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 that after I do it, I'll see water. Water represents opportunities. God said, after you do what I tell you to do, the valley will be filled with water. Yeah. Is that, 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 is this yeah. filled with water? Now listen, this is not complicated. Here's the principle. When God says dig a ditch, it's my job to dig a ditch, and it's God's job to supply the water. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my job to ask where the water's coming from. Y'all want to get this and watch this. If you come out to the town hall meeting, you know what I'm talking about. It's not my job to ask God where it's coming from. It's my job to see if it is. It's not my job to say, oh Lord, I don't know how you're going to afford that 60 years from now. God, God said, that ain't your job. So look at what you're going to afford. I 
said that I'm from Wayne's weekend uh, with my family and and and, and, and we catered or we, we we got horrible food. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, Ralph said the grace, and I said, for what? <laughs> Problem as a way to go down 
But God looks at a problem as a way to bring you up. That's why it ain't no big thing for him. It ain't no big thing. It, it, any God, any God that can heal a leper and raise a dead man from the grave, when he looks at your little bitty problem, it ain't no big thing. Any God that can heal a paralytic by the roadside and turn the hem of his garment into a drugstore, when he looks at your problem, it ain't no big thing. Thank you. 